Dubai is often associated with opulence and extravagance, as tourists are greeted with stunning scenery, magnificent buildings, and wealth everywhere they go. However, when it comes to the luxury watch industry, there is more to it than meets the eye. Even with vast amounts of wealth, it may not be enough to acquire certain timepieces. Welcome to another episode of The Steady Ticker. Do you have a soft spot for watches? Subscribe now to The Steady Ticker and click the notification bell to keep posted on the latest news on different luxury watch brands and its industry. We create content on trivias, intricacies, history and anything under the weather about luxury watch brands and their models. In this episode, We'll delve into the hidden truths and unspoken rules of the Dubai luxury watch industry. The United Arab Emirates is widely recognized as a hub for the constant movement of money and goods. However, it may surprise you to know that obtaining luxury timepieces in this region can be quite challenging despite the small size of these watches that can easily be hidden under a shirt sleeve. Do you find it ironic how obtaining something so small can be so complex? Acquiring timepieces from top luxury brands like Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, Rolex and Richard Mille requires more than just simply swiping your credit card or handing over cash at the counter. If you aspire to own such prestigious timepieces, you will need to engage in extensive research, frequent communication with sales representatives, and even make multiple visits to the stores. It takes a lot of effort to get your hands on these acquisitions. The interesting thing is that even if you meticulously execute all of those tasks mentioned above, there is still no guarantee that you will succeed in acquiring your desired model. The competition of Dubai's luxury watch industry is extremely intense. For example, did you know that Ahmed Siddiqui and Sons is the only authorized Rolex distributor in Dubai and operates the largest Rolex store on the planet? The popularity of Swiss watches is also increasing in the country. The Federation of the Swiss Watch Industry reports that in October, the export value of Swiss luxury watches to the United Arab Emirates experienced exponential growth, increasing by 13.8% compared to the same time last year. At the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, physical stores and shops were closed due to strict lockdown regulations, leading to an accumulation of money in people's pockets. However, with limited opportunities for spending, this surplus led to the rise of online shopping. As a result, online luxury shops experienced a significant surge in traffic, with wealthy clients placing orders for luxury goods from the comfort of their homes. Even those unfamiliar with luxury timepieces were drawn to the trend, buying them simply because others were doing so. Mohammed Siddiqui was astonished to see a customer wearing a shiny new Rolex Daytona without even knowing how to use its functions. Mohammed Siddiqui recounted an experience he had with a customer where the customer was sporting a Rolex Daytona but had no knowledge of the watch's functions. According to Siddiqui, the popularity of luxury timepieces is not necessarily due to their functionality, but rather their perceived desirability or hotness. If you were to visit a Rolex store in the United Arab Emirates, you might be surprised to see that most of the exquisite models on display are there for show only. However, there's a catch. Displays are strictly for demonstration purposes. Have you ever wondered what happens when a member of the ultra-rich and prominent royal family in the UAE wants a new Rolex? You might think that waiting lists don't apply to them and they can simply walk into a store, point out what they want, pay and leave. However, this is not the case. They can sometimes have their hands tied as well. According to Mohammed Abdul Majid Siddiqui, the chief commercial officer of Siddiqui Holding and the owner of the Swiss watch retailer in the UAE. If a member of the royal family in the United Arab Emirates wants a Rolex for personal use, they will be granted one. However, if they want it as a gift for their elite friends or visitors, the company becomes more selective. According to Siddiqui, some people take it personally and the company has to be fair to clients by giving it to the right people. As for the average resident, the company has a strict waiting list policy for Rolex timepieces and limits its wait list to 4,000 clients only. However, for other luxury brands, the number of clients on the waiting list is different. For instance, Patek Philippe, which produces significantly fewer watches per year than Rolex, has a waiting list of only around 20 to 30 clients. When the timepieces become available, the company offers them to clients based on interesting metrics and prior buying habits. Additionally, the company tends to avoid offering a similar timepiece model to one the client had already recently purchased. 
Unlike most other nations where Rolex boutiques can be found in the world, in the United Arab Emirates, flipping is heavily discouraged. In fact, if you are found guilty of flipping, you would almost immediately get dropped from the list or worse, shadow banned. Moreover, it is highly likely that the company would find out. Mohammed Siddiqui discovered through his anonymous sources, which he has acquired over his decades of experience in the luxury business, that quite a number of people, even filthy rich ones, flip timepieces for a significant amount of dollars in profits. Let's talk about some of the interesting metrics. As we mentioned earlier, customers are closely analyzed, and with a waiting list for the Rolex limited to only 4,000 names, sales representatives face the challenge of carefully filtering through numerous names to determine the right options for a shipment. This can be a daunting task, but it's a critical step to ensure that the right clients receive the products they desire. To filter clients in some luxury brands, particularly in countries where luxury and status symbols are the norm, sales representatives may look for outward signs of wealth and status. For example, they may observe whether a client arrives in a Lamborghini or is dressed in expensive designer clothing. The client's personal accessories, such as designer items or luxury timepieces, may also be taken into consideration. Luxury sales representatives in Dubai have a different approach to filtering clients compared to other countries where status symbols are relied upon. Even billionaires may arrive at the store in an Uber taxi, so appearances are not a reliable indicator of wealth. Sales representatives in Dubai carefully observe and monitor the client's behavior and details, such as which hand they hold their teacup with to ensure that the prospective buyer values and holds onto the watch instead of buying it with the intention of flipping it later. This is because luxury timepieces can be sold on the secondary market for two or three times the amount it was originally bought for at retail. Furthermore, salesmen for luxury timepieces often go the extra mile to ensure that the prospective buyer values and treasures the watch rather than buying it with the sole intention of reselling it later. This is because luxury watches can be resold on the secondary market for much more than their original retail price, sometimes even two or three times more. Salesmen carefully observe the behavior and attitude of prospective buyers to determine if they are genuine watch collectors or simply looking to make a quick profit. One way to determine this is by observing if the buyer continues to wear the same watch for several years, indicating a true appreciation for the timepiece. Another key metric used in the luxury watch industry is the relationship between the customer and the sales associate. Customers who have a positive and a friendly relationship with a sales associate are more likely to have an advantage over customers who are more anonymous. A sales associate interviewed by the Middle Eastern Eye reportedly pointed out a 30-year-old customer who always checks on him when he is at the mall, messages him to ask about new products, and shows a genuine interest in building a relationship. The sales associate preferred to give the desired watch to this customer over someone who is likely to sell it later. Building a relationship with a sales associate is an important tactic for customers to increase their chances of acquiring their desired luxury watch. One customer also shared that he was able to purchase an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, which retails at around $46,000. After just two years of developing a friendly relationship with a sales associate, some prospective customers may even purchase lower priced or less popular timepieces that they may not have a strong interest in simply to improve their buying history and establish a positive relationship with the sales associates. This tactic can increase their chances of being prioritized for future desirable watch releases. Watch retailers from Dubai surely put great importance to the value, significance and relevance of timepieces from different luxury watch brands. They see to it that the elegance of such watches complements the lifestyle and personality of the prospective buyers. The arduous process of acquiring luxury timepieces in Dubai is no match to the satisfaction and thrill that it brings to the very few people to be given a chance to possess them. What do you think of the luxury watch industry in Dubai? Are you also willing to go through all the hassle just to own a Rolex? Comment down below and let us know your thoughts. Want to hear more about watches? Hit the subscribe button below to support the Steady Ticker channel and click the notification bell to instantly know about our new videos on luxury watches. See you in the next one.